Shalom, my beautiful brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. So when I was praying this morning, I heard the Lord speaking to my spirit. He said, prodigal son. And I automatically knew that he wanted me to do a message to the brothers and sisters about the prodigal sons and daughters. Amen. That they should return home unto the Lord. So in obedience, I'm doing this message. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through to 24. Amen. Let's begin. And a certain man had two sons. And the youngest of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a faraway country. And there was wasted his substance with riotous living. So he said, Lord, I want my portion. What is it that you have for me? Out of your riches, out of your life savings. He collected all that he was given by his father. He went to a faraway country and he wasted it, his substance on righteous living. Righteous living, riotous, R-I-O-T-O-U-S, living, basically means uncontrollable behavior. He had more money than he could fathom. So he spent it, he wasted it, he spent it all off and he's basically now wasted his substance. What has the Lord given you? Has he given you riches? Has he given you anointing? Amen. What is it that's caused you to be a prodigal son? Have you wasted the riches that the Lord has given you? Has he given you anointing and you used it to charm men or charm women into having what you want? Amen. What is it that's causing you to be a prodigal son? What caused you? What is it that caused it to come between you and the Lord? Amen. Is it wealth? Is it drugs? Is it women? Is it money? Is it poverty? Amen. I too at one point was a prodigal son. And this was caused by my family. And not in terms of that I blame them. But in terms of they came between me and the Lord. Or I allowed them to come between me and the Lord. Because I was out preaching in the streets. I was out evangelizing. I was preaching in other churches. And I thought being young in Christ. I thought that the Bible says that if you do the Lord's will. Then he will take care of your family. Amen. And I went to my baby mom's house at the time. And I've noticed that she only had a stick of butter in the fridge. That's it. Just one stick of butter. And I was like, no Lord, this is not part of the deal. If I'm out here doing your work, you're meant to be providing for my family. It was a test that I failed. And I failed it because I immediately decided, that, you know what? I'm going to the countryside and I'm going to start selling what I want to sell to do what I want to do to make money. Amen. And I remember actually the Lord, he came to me while I was there. I've just um, was very uh, I didn't violently not put my hands on a person, but I just very aggressively shouted and bad up somebody and said, listen, you need to clean up the bando, the trap house. You need to, I want it clean. There's dust everywhere. It's dirty. I'm not staying in this dirty place. And I was waving my gun around, kind of threatening this guy. And he was on his knees, basically cleaning, basically scared. And I was sitting there counting some money. And the Lord just came to me. And he said to me, with a nice soft voice, what are you doing here? I already took you out this lifestyle. What are you doing here? And I literally had to tell my brother, listen, you hold this and you hold that. I need to go outside for a minute because the Lord just pays me. And I was outside and I was just sobbing and weeping. I was like, I know, Lord, I know you took me out this lifestyle. But because of X, Y, and Z, I didn't realize that you, you, you provided for them. You kept them fed every day. I just wanted to go there and see the shopping in the cupboards and the fridge stacked up like what I'm used to seeing. This wasn't, this was my fault. And um, at this point, I was struggling to get back to the Lord because I now got myself gripped back into the wrong things. And I had to catch a case where I was looking at around 14 years I was looking at for the Lord to say you know what for me to say to the Lord you know what that's it I'm done you took me out I came back to my own vomit and I want you to free me and this time I will never go back and the Lord freed me by his grace and mercy and I never went back so I had to repent 
had to recognize where I've fallen. Amen. And the Lord is saying, my prodigal sons and daughters that have left me, why have you left? Analyze the situation. Analyze your life. Why have you left? Amen. I had a sister that looked at one of my messages about your attire, your artwork, your artwork attire. And she said, you know what? I used to dress moderately. Glory to God. But because she wanted a husband, she started dressing worldly and seductively because she knew men. Well, she said men go by what they see. They're visual. So I'm not sure if she caught the husband or not. But she said she knows that it's time now to go back to the Lord because time is short. And this is the main reason behind this message. Because the Lord wants to call his prodigal sons and daughters back because time is short and he's coming home. Amen. So don't feel like I'm here judging anyone saying, oh, I'm holier than doubt and I was born in church and when I came to the Lord, I stayed in there. It's hard. It's hard. Amen. And I too fell back into the world. I too fell back into the sins that the Lord had, had, had took me out of. But I'm living proof that if you repent and come to the Lord, then he's just and, and merciful enough and loving and graceful enough to forgive you and give you the strength to not need to go back into that lifestyle anymore. Amen. So, this prodigal son had wasted all his substance on his on his righteous living. Amen. Spent it all off. Spent all the wealth that his father was giving him. Amen. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine. And in that land, and he began to be in want. So as his money was finished, there was a famine in the land now and he had needs. He needed to eat. He needed to survive. But he had no money and there was a famine. Amen. Verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into its fields to feed swine. So he went and found somebody and this person said, oh, you want a job? You can feed the pigs. Amen. He went from being up there, wealthy. Now he's down here feeding pigs because there's a famine and he's on one. Amen. Verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. So now he's actually eating what the pigs are eating because even though the brother got him working, he ain't feeding him. No one's not giving him food. No one not feel sorry for him. He just gave him a job and left him down to be in there eating with the pigs. Amen. Like things got really bad for him. Amen. Now, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, because at this point is a critical situation in his life. He had to make a decision where, am I going to continue to eat with the pigs? Am I going to continue to live in my sin? Or am I going to go back to the Father? Amen. So let's go to Genesis chapter 3, and it's verse 8 and 10. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, and verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the Lord why because they just ate the fruit that the Lord told them not to eat and there was a shame because they sinned before the Lord because sin brings shame and guilt and 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 sin makes you not want to be in the presence of God you don't want to go to church you don't want to pray because sin bounds you with chains and makes you want to hide from God the Bible says that they hid from God amen and verse 9 says, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. They're now afraid of God and hiding from God because of sin. This is what sin does. Makes you not want to pray, makes you not want to go to church, makes you want to hide from God. Amen? And so at this point, he had to make a choice. Am I going to continue eating with the pigs? Or am I going to repent and go back to the Lord? Amen? And this, I believe in Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles says um if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways meaning their sin then they will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land so the lord said in his word in in second chronicles if if my people repent of their sins and turn to me i will heal their land i will heal their body i will heal their mind i will heal their heart i will heal their soul amen and so we continue verse 17 and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have he bread enough to spare 
and I perish with hunger. So he came to himself and he says, wait, my father is rich. Why am I sitting here eating with the pigs? I mean, my father is so rich that he hired many people and he still have bread to spare. And I'm here perishing with hunger, meaning he got to the point now he was so hungry, he was going to die of hunger. Amen. And he's saying, wait, but my father is rich. Why should I sit here and die of hunger? I need to understand that your father is merciful. Why should you sit here and die in your sin? Amen. And so he had to check himself. Amen. He had to check himself and says, wait, what am I really doing? Am I going to die? In my sin, am I gonna die in my hunger? Amen. And so we need to make a decision. What are we doing? Because what he could have done was sat there and blamed his father. Oh, you didn't give me enough money, that's why it finished. Just like many of us in a situation that would choose to blame God. Oh God, if you're so real, why have you got me living with pigs and eating with the swines? No, it's not God's fault. And it's about time that the church wakes up and stop making decisions without God. And they want to blame God for the consequence of the decisions that we made without God. Amen. He chose to go to a faraway land and squander his money. So would he have the right now to blame God for the way he's living? No, because he didn't say, Lord, what shall I do with this money? Because the other brother, if you read from 24 down to 32, he multiplied the money and he grew the money and he, he invested it and he was doing pretty well. Amen. But this brother was going by the leadership of the Lord. This other brother didn't seek the Lord's counsel. He just took all that money and thought, hmm, what I want to do? First I'm going to do is move away and squander the money. But if he asked the Lord what should he do, then the money would have multiplied. He wouldn't have became broke. He wouldn't have became eating with the pigs and still dying of hunger. Amen. So we need to stop making decisions without the Lord and then blaming God for the outcome of the decision that we made without involving God first. So now he was at a critical point where he was about to perish with hunger and he had to analyze the situation and say, hmm, what am I going to do? Am I going to continue like this and die in my sin? Are you going to continue being a prodigal son and daughter or are you going to return to the Lord? Amen. And verse 18 says, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before thee. And he came to the conclusion, the smartest, the wisest, and the best thing for him to do is to go to the Lord and go to his father and say, I have sinned against heaven, forgive me. And some of us need to cost, go on our knees and say, Lord, you know what? I confess. I try to do it my way. My way don't work. The more harder I try, the worse I become. The more I try to fix things my way, the more I end up in destruction. Amen. Because when we walk away from God, when we become a prodigal son, we can no longer fix our life. It's like this phone. This phone drops now and it breaks. I cannot fix it because I did not invent or make the iPhone. I don't know the ins and the outs how to fix an iPhone. But when you bring it back to the original creator of the iPhone and they can bring it back to who made it and invented it, that person can fix it. You're not the author of your life. So whatever is broken in your life, whatever is calling you to fall away from the Lord, you can't fix that by yourself. You can't stop smoking, you can't stop partying, you can't come back to the Lord unless you go to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I need your strength. Amen. I couldn't stop drinking or smoking about the Lord. I couldn't turn away about certain lifestyle from without the Lord's help. And in the very same way, we have to go back to the Lord. And he came to his senses and said, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I've tried. I've tried to get a job after I've spent all my money and now I'm eating with the pigs. And I'm dying for hunger. There's no point in me dying for hunger and my father is rich with spare bread. And there's no point you dying to sin when, 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 when Jesus said, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. So he thought about it and he came to himself and says, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the Lord. Amen. And so verse is 18 when he was saying, I'll go to the Lord and say, you know what? I've sinned against thee. Verse 19. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. And make me as one of thy hired servants. So now he, he felt so bad. He didn't want to be called a son no more. He just wanted to be known as a servant. He just wanted to be the least in the kingdom. He just wanted to be the smallest. Because he know what he's done. But he needed to realize that. As he says. I, was, I am no longer worthy. He wasn't worthy in the first place. 
I wasn't worthy. None of us was worthy. The only thing that we was worthy of is hell and death. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12 says, Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, said the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am a merciful God, said the Lord, and I will keep not my anger from thee. So the Lord is saying, hey, if you repent and come to me, thou backsliding, Amen. I will be merciful towards you and I won't cause my anger to be upon you. Amen. And this is what this is the point where he got to, where he realized that you know what? I need the Lord. I need his mercy. I need my father's mercy. I need his love. If I go back and I confess that I've sinned against heaven, he will forgive me. And the Lord is saying the same thing. You backsliders out there. You prodigal sons and daughters out there. If you return unto the Lord, he is merciful and just to forgive your sins. If you just repent. That's all he's saying. Just repent and come back. Amen. I know a testimony of a lady, our man, I don't remember, but this person had a Bible. It was up on a shelf. It stayed up on that shelf for years and it gathered dust. And they walked past it every day and it gathered dust. And one day they picked it up and they opened it. And as they opened it, the word spoke to them. And they brought down in tears. And then the Lord said to them, I never left you. I was with you. You left me. Amen. And they could, they was amazed that all they had to do was just pick up the Bible and the Lord was with them again. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the Lord don't leave us. We're the one who leaves him. And he says, if you repent and come back to me, my grace and my mercy is sufficient is enough. Amen. Because he's now here saying in verse 19, I'm no longer worthy. You was never worthy in the first place. Amen. The Bible said that the Lord died for us while we were sinners. Amen. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says, amen? For we was born in, in iniquity and we were shaped in sin, amen? So Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we was made healed, amen? We was never worthy. He did it all for us, amen? He took it all on for us. He did it all for us, amen? And so as he was saying here that I'm no longer worthy, Amen. He decided that he was going to go back to his father, confess his sins and ask to be one of the least in the kingdom. Amen. And this is what we need to do. Look into ourselves, accept our wrongs and repent. Because like I said, I've been a prodigal son and the Lord had mercy upon me and gave me strength to overcome my trials and temptations. Amen. And also there's other prodigal sons. Jonah was a prodigal son. God said, Jonah, listen, go to, go to Nineveh and preach to the people because their sins is causing a stench up unto me and I'm going to destroy that land. Jonah became a prodigal son but he said, no Lord, I ain't going over there. I don't like them people. Just destroy them. And he had the audacity to go and, and buy a ticket, jump on a boat and decide he's going that way. And the Lord had to cause him to be in the belly of a well for him to realize I'm going to die in my disobedience. I'm going to die in my sin. I need to repent. Amen. And so he repented and God caused the well, the big fish to vomit him up on the land. And then he eventually went and did what the Lord told him to do. And the people actually repented. They would have perished if he wasn't obedient to the Lord. So he was a prodigal son. But when he came back, the Lord's love and mercy was there for him. Amen. Also David. David was a prodigal son. He was a mighty man of God. He slew Goliath. Amen. He became a king or whatever. He was doing great. And he saw by accident some woman having a shower and he thought, hmm, I like her, you know, she looked good still. Send his servant, go and call me that woman. He lay with the woman. Then he continued to lay with the woman instead of repenting the first time. And he was so involved in laying with the woman that he tried to get her husband killed to cover up his mischief. Because I think he got her pregnant or some foolishness. Amen. And he had to go to the Lord and repent. I said, oh Lord, because of my own lost or whatever i have sinned against thee forgive me amen and the lord forgave him amen and still continue to use him for a while so so don't think you're the only one even the great prophets out here struggling like this amen and and, and the lord's mercy and grace reach them so the lord's grace and mercy will reach you but you have to first repent amen you have to confess your sin say to the lord i've fallen short of your glory 
I went back to the vomit that you took me out of. I went back to this and doing that and doing that and doing this that you took me out of. Forgive me, Lord. Give me your strength and he will give you strength. Amen. So, verse 19 says that he felt that he was no more worthy to be called a son. Amen. And verse 20. He arose. Amen. He arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran out and fell upon his neck and kissed him. And when you're coming back, the Lord will see you from a mile away. Amen. Because he knows our hearts, our mind. So he knows you're going to go on your knee and repent before you even said, Lord, I repent. Because he can feel, he knows you. Amen. And that's like this father. Because the Bible says, if your earthly father knows how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly father know how to give good gifts? If your earthly father asks, if you ask your father for a, a sweet or food or a fish, will he give you a stone? So if the earthly father could forgive him for squandering his blessing, how much more would the heavenly father forgive you for squandering your blessing or turning away? Amen. And he says that as he came, his father saw him from a great, great way. Great way off. Amen. And he ran to him, had compassion. How many times did you read the Bible and the Jesus said that he had compassion on somebody? Somebody was with a demon, the Lord had compassion. Somebody needed healing, the Lord had compassion. Amen. The Lord will have compassion on you. You can empathize and say, you know what? I'll give you mercy and grace. I'll give you strength. Amen. And so, his father had compassion on him and ran to him and fell on his neck and kissed him. Can you just imagine how his father saw him and he just ran and ran and ran and hugged him and kissed him? He was happy to see him. Amen. The Bible says that one soul that comes to Christ, there's a party in heaven. So if you've backslidden, if you're a prodigal son and you're in danger of hell and now return to the Lord, there's a party in heaven for you because you've come back to the Lord. That's how happy heaven is to see you, how happy the Lord is. He will hug you and kiss you and embrace you. Amen. That's why he died with his arms out saying, come to me and I will embrace you. I'll have compassion. I will hold you. Amen. Just like this father went and, and went and hugged his son. Amen. He missed him. Amen. He hugged him and kissed him. Glory to God. Amen. And verse 21 says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. He was sorry for what he's done. He realized that he was foolish for his behavior. He so said, I'm no longer worthy to be called thy son. I've sinned against heaven. Amen. But the father, he already forgave him. He already have compassion on him. Amen. Verse 22 says, But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. What do you mean? You're not even worthy to be called my son. I love you. I miss you. I have compassion on you. I'm happy to see you. Amen. He gave him the best, the best robe. He says, let's have a feast. He said, let's have a feast. He gave him clothes. Amen. Um, if we look at Psalms 113, verse 7 and 8 quickly. Psalms 113, verse 7 and 8. It says, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes and even with the princes of the people. Amen. The Lord will raise you up out of the dust and set you with kings. Amen. I'll share this testimony. There was a point in my life where I was serving the Lord and he brought me to Gambia. And two miraculous things happened. The first thing was I was in the best hotel in the whole of Gambia. And I had the best suite overlooking the, 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 the pool and the hotel and the beach. And, and, and being previously... Um, bouncing around on sofas or not having my own accommodation or um, not living the richest life growing up. Um, for me, that was a miracle. I love fruits. And at dinner, I had all the fruits I can think of. And I had lobster, fried chicken, jerk chicken, stew chicken, fried dumpling, fried plantain, green... I had, I had a feast. And I was sat with all of the pastors and the prophets 
and all of the other people were sit at other tables. I was seated with the leaders of the trip. I just kept crying and eating and crying and eating. I'm like, Lord, you're giving me all my favorite fruits and, 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 and all my favorite food all at once. Like, I didn't have to pay for any of this. Surely you love me, Lord. Surely. And one of the prophetess or the pastors that was looking at me crying, was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And the other man of God was like, can you see you sitting with the Lord? And I'm telling you, you don't, you don't know where I'm coming from. You don't know how I've suffered in my life. You don't know about when I've been hungry. And the Lord has provided all my favorite fruits at once. There was this big space in front of me with all my favorite food. And then on top of that, on top of that, we went to, to see um, Kenta Kunte's ancestors. We got on a boat, we went to the village where they took Kente Kunte from. Those of you who know about slavery. And, and, and I went up to the king, the chief. I was, a bit, I was a bit proud of myself, like, yeah, what do you mean I can't go say hello to the chief? And like, nah, you have to sit here. And they came with their little feathers and they did a little dance. <laughs> they did a little dance. And they're like, you have to sit here. And I'm like, nah, that's my ancestor. That's my great, 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 great ancestor. I'm going to go say hello to him. And he, he honoured my courage when I went there and shook his hand. I was like, you can't shake his hand. And I'm like, Shh, what's wrong with you? The Lord's with me. I can, do what I, I can do all things through Christ. And I went and I shook his hand. And I did a little dance as well that they were doing. And he liked it. And he sat me with him. Now, the prince, head chief of Gambia, I'm sitting with him like a king. Sitting with him. While the rest of the people... And so when the Lord says, I will seat you with kings. When he says that I will provide... Don't take it. These scriptures are real. Amen. Just share the small testing, brothers and sisters. Gonna wrap up though, because I know you don't know like long messages. Amen. But it's worth it. Amen. You sit and watch a stupid movie for hours that don't edify your soul. This message is from the Lord. It will edify your soul. Sit through it. Bear with me. Amen. Glory to God. And verse 20, 23. Amen. And he said, And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. So he went from eating with the pigs, eating pig food, to almost dying for hunger, to coming back and the biggest fat calf was about to be killed to create a feast. Amen. Excuse me. Glory to God. And verse 24 said, And this my son was dead and now is alive. Glory to God. How many of you know that there's two deaths in the Bible? The first death is to be separated from the Lord. That's why when the devil told Adam and Eve, if you eat the fruit, you, you will not die. And they still was alive. They was alive, but they had the first death to be cut off from the Lord. The second death is the physical death. The first one is spiritual. The second one's physical. Spiritual death means being cut off from God. And the physical death is actually dying in the dirt. So his first when this my son was dead. He was cut off from me. And he's alive again. He's back to me. Amen. And the Lord don't want you cut off from him. He want you back with him. Amen. And for this my son was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. And, and they begun to be merry. Amen. The songwriter says, I was blind but now I see. I was lost but now I'm found. Amen. Amazing grace who saved a wretch like me. It's amazing grace. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the amazing grace of the Lord that brought him back to his father. And it's the amazing grace of the Lord that is sending this message out to you saying, come home, my prodigal son. Come home, my prodigal daughter. I will robe you with the finest robes. I will put you in a garment that is white without spot or blemish. Amen. I'll give you feast for your hungriness. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand God's love. Understand God's grace. Understand God's mercy that's reaching out to you right now. Right, right now. Amen. Who else was a prodigal son? John chapter 1. Hallelujah. John was a prodigal son also. Amen. John walked with the Lord. He, 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 he saw him do all these miracles and he denied the Lord. That became that made him a prodigal son because he was away from the Lord. He denied the Lord. And when, when the Lord died, he went to fishing. The Lord said, I'll make you a fisher of men. So he should have continued to preach the gospel when the Lord died. But no, he went back. And when sometimes we get cut off from God, we go back to what we was doing before we met God. If he was clubbing, you went back to clubbing. If he was smoking, you went back to smoking. If he was violent, you went back to being violent. If he was on the road, you go back to the road. Because you go back to what you know. Amen. And and, and Peter went back to fishing. Amen. First, first John chapter, sorry, John chapter 21, verse 1 to 9 tells you the story. Amen. Because the Lord was risen back up from the dead in, in um in John chapter 20. 
and this is where he saw he saw Thomas and Thomas could even believe and the Lord was like take your finger and put it in my side where they pierced me now do you believe and he believed and the Lord told him listen you believe because you saw but great are those who believe without seeing amen and then he went on to Peter now and Peter and them was fishing and the Lord was like cast the net on the other side and they still could even realize that the Lord was there with them because that's how they met Jesus in the first place he said cast the net and they caught bare fish so now the Lord went to them and said, Oh, Peter, Simon Peter, cast the net on the other side. And then they cast the net and they pulled up a load of these fish and they still didn't realize it was the Lord. And a lot of you right now are still not realizing, listen, the Lord is reaching out to you through this message. You need to realize. And then the Lord said, Peter, it is I. And then I was like, Oh no, Lord, it's you. And they was happy. And then the Lord reconciled by saying, Peter, I love you three times because Peter denied the Lord three times. Amen. He reconciled with Peter and at, and at that moment Peter was no longer a prodigal son and he became one of the mightiest when you read Acts woo, Peter's the one that said listen I have silver or gold and I, I don't have no silver and gold but what I have in the name of Jesus get up and walk Amen and did all these miracles so that people brought men that was even that his shadow would heal people cast out demons heal the sick he was doing the most miracles for the Lord Amen I love Peter's anointing Amen so don't think the Lord will just come back and make you a slave or a servant or the least. He will still raise you up to be in that position that he called you to be in the first place. Amen. But first you have to repent and come back to the Lord. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, understand what the Lord is doing right now. Because in Luke chapter 15 verse 4, he says this. Hallelujah. Because the prodigal son was Jesus speaking. Jesus was the one speaking. Amen. And he says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. And then he told them the story of the prodigal son. But in verse 4, chapter 15, he says, What man of what man of you have been an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine and into and go into the wilderness after the one which is lost? So he said, even though I have ninety-nine of my sheep, that one prodigal son is worth me leaving the ninety-nine and going in the wilderness and searching for them. Amen. The Bible says that that um, you basically will carry that sheep, embrace him in his arm. Because verse 5 says, And when he has found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he searched and he found that one sheep, he put on his shoulder, rejoicing. That's like how the prodigal son hugged his, his, his prodigal father, hugged his son on the shoulder and kissed him on his cheek. And he rejoiced. Amen. And the Lord is saying, just like that one sheep, don't matter how, how unworthy you think you is, I died for you. I shed my blood on Calvary for you. If you was the only one on the planet that was meant to be saved, I would have came and done it. And if it requires me to do it again for you to become a prodigal son and come home, I would hang on that cross again for you. It's the love of God. Amen. It's the love of God. Because the Bible said the Lord so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, amen, shall have eternal life and not perish. Amen. And the reason why the Lord is calling back his prodigal sons right now is not only because the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few and you're one of the laborers. It's not only because many are called and few is chosen, but you are chosen, but because the Lord is coming back. He says in the end times I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and all men will dream dreams and have visions. Young men will dream dreams and old men will have visions, whatever. It's happening. Thousands and thousands of people having rapture dreams. But it's not only rapture dreams. There's flood dreams. There's fire dreams. There's dreams of comets. Amen. There's dreams of destruction that's coming. The mark of the beast is here. Amen. So, can you imagine if you're a parent and you have to do a school run and you've got five kids in the school but you're only allowed to pick up two of them kids? How heartbreaking is that? And this is what the Lord is doing. He's saying, my prodigal sons, come because I want all five of you. I don't want to come and get only two of you. Amen. And nobody understands that the Lord has got his arms open, calling all his prodigal sons and daughters, return unto me, repent of your sins, my grace and mercy is here waiting for you. Because even though I can come and get the two sons, I will wait for the five. But there's a time period, there is a cutoff point. Amen. There's an there's a end of the church age that's coming. There's a, there's a point where grace will not be found on the earth no more. Because I will rapture my church. So don't think because I'm waiting for the three to be ready, I'm not going to leave the two behind because I'm waiting for the three. I will come and get the two and leave then. But I want all five. So repent my prodigal sons and daughters. Amen. 
my grace and mercy is sufficient. Amen. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit and authority in Jesus' name that this message will pierce into any prodigal sons and daughters' heart, any backslider's heart, or even those that are lukewarm to come to the Lord fully surrendering. Amen. That His love and His grace and mercy can reach you and, and, and cause you to surrender and He can embrace you in His arms and give you the strength to be in His presence and stay in His presence that He may fill your oil. Amen. Fill your lamp with oil that you may be one of the five wise virtues and not the foolish. Amen. That you be ready and waiting for the Lord's return. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I give God glory for this message. Um, I thank you for listening. Please share and like to somebody that even you think that is away from God or someone that needs to hear the message. Amen. Um, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in you and me and us all in these last days. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. The Lord is coming back, brothers and sisters. If you're a prodigal son and daughter, please come home. The Lord is waiting for you. He loves you. Amen. I love you. You are greatly to be loved. Amen. And you are loved greatly. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.